Citizens, it's that time you're officially in Alert Zone. Welcome to the Alert Zone TV. I am the Wizard Uncle James. I would love for you to become an active citizen, and you can do that by hitting the subscribe button, hitting the bell so you can be notified when we drop fire content, giving the video a like, sharing. Welcome to another episode of the docu series we are doing here at the Alert Zone TV called Never Again. In today's episode, we are going to be discussing two people you may or may have never heard of and ladies this is why you need to be legally owned we'll be discussing Carl Eugene Watts and Derek Todd Lee so without further ado let's get this going this is per Wikipedia Carl Eugene Watts, born November 7, 1953, died September 21st, 2007, also known by his nickname, Coral, was an American serial killer dubbed a Sunday morning slasher who murdered numerous women and girls over an eight-year period. He is suspected of being the most prolific serial killer in the United States history. He died of prostate cancer while serving two life sentences of imprisonment without parole in Michigan for the murders of Helen Dutcher and Gloria Steele, although the number of his victims may have exceeded a hundred. So that was just a quick analysis of Coral Eugene Watts and how I found about, about him. A&E used to have this series called American Justice with Bill Curtis. And one morning I just happened to be watching this and they mentioned Coral Eugene Watts, a guy I had never heard of. And he started off killing in Michigan. He moved to Texas. He got caught killing in Texas. He did so many years and because of good behavior, he was going to parole out of the Texas system when somebody from Michigan who had kept saying that he had been a particular serial killer was finally believed and he was taken and extradited to Michigan where he was found guilty and that's why he died in Michigan. He was finna be released from Texas, from Huntsville State Prison. They said that the number of women he killed probably exceeded over 100. According to Carl Eugene Watts, that number could be true. I remember watching that program in which they had taken him into an interrogation room in Texas. And one of the officers told him, I got to have enough fingers and toes to count the women that you killed. He looked around besides himself that particular officer, I think it was two or three other officers in that room. And Carl Eugene Watts looked this officer in the face and told him, there ain't enough fingers and toes in this room to count the amount of women that I didn't kill. Yet, he's a serial killer most people never heard of. And the strange thing about him is he's possibly the most prolific serial killer in American history, and he's a black man. We've always equated serial killing to white men. Uh, while the numbers show that most serial killers are white, it is not always only white men. There's black. There was Leonard Lake and Charles Ng. You guys remember them? Richard Ramirez, the Night Stalker, and on top of other people that were not white. But Carl Eugene Watts said his reasoning for killing all those women was, in his mind, they were evil and they had to die. Got my Canic TP9 SA, my winter EDC on me. Ladies, when I tell you you have to be legally armed out here and you have to know your weapon, you have to put that goddamn phone down out in public and pay attention to what's going on. These are the kind of people that's roaming the street. I told you, criminals are not brave, they're opportunists. They're always looking for soft targets. Women, I know you want your equality, but you'll always be seen as a soft target to a man. 
there is no equality when it comes to physicality. Period. Point blank. Get it through your head. This is why most serial killers are men, and why you have so many men that killed more women as serial killers than you have female serial killers that killed men. Most female serial killers killed children. They killed babies. They didn't kill men because they understand that dynamic. It is almost impossible for them to go around strangling and shooting and killing up men. Period. Point blank. Now, we're going to get to another individual who I mentioned from my home state of Louisiana. <sighs> Derek Todd Lee. And this is per Wikipedia. Derek Todd Lee, born November 5th, 1968, died January 21st, 2016, also known as the Baton Rouge serial killer, was an American serial killer from 1992 to 2003. Lee murdered seven women in the Baton Rouge area. Before his murder charges, Lee had been arrested for stalking women and watching them in their homes. Despite this arrest, he initially was overlooked by police because they incorrectly believed the serial killer was white. Lee was linked by DNA tests to the deaths of seven women in the Baton Rouge and Lafayette areas in Louisiana in 2004. He was convicted in separate trials of the murders of Geraldine DeSoto and Charlotte Murray Pace. The Pace trial resulted in a death sentence. Newspapers suggest Lee was responsible for other unsolved murders in the area, but the police lacked DNA evidence to prove these connections. After Lee's arrest, it was discovered that another serial killer, Sean Vincent Gillis, was operating in the Baton Rouge area during the same time as Lee. Lee died in, on January 21st, 2016 of heart disease at a Louisiana hospital where he was transported for treatment from Louisiana State Penitentiary in which he had been waiting execution. So, Derek Todd Lee was a Baton Rouge and a Louisiana serial killer that operated along I-10. Uh, there's an episode about him on Forensic Files. Uh, when he was first caught, we were all in shock. I remember that like it was yesterday. That when they finally caught that serial killer, it was a black fella. As you watch the episode of some Forensic Files, you'll see the same thing. A lot of white folks was outraged that they were looking for a white man, but this was white people crimes. There's things that's considered as crimes that's usually specific to a particular group of people. Uh, most serial killers in the country have been white men. So everybody assumed because the victims were white, this were white, this was a white man. We were all shocked when we saw him. However, he didn't make a statement until they finally took him to prison one day and he turned around and screamed he didn't kill none of those women. Uh, DNA evidence said otherwise, and as you guys heard, Lee died of heart disease <laughs> while awaiting execution. He probably was going to die of old age before they executed him in the state of Louisiana. He'd have been on death row for 40 years. He would have just died from being old. But Derek Todd Lee is another precautionary tale of why women need to be legally armed and you need to know those weapons and you need to pay attention because you may not be out looking for trouble, but that doesn't mean trouble is not out looking for you. We appreciate, we appreciate the love we get here at the Alert Zone. And we really, really appreciate the viewing of the Doctor series, the comments. If you are unaware of the stories that you hear here, share them with other people that may not be aware. Let's get the conversation going. Because this not only happens here in America, but it happens worldwide. Because this is a worldwide movement. So, until next episode out there, everybody, stay safe, stay armed. Ladies, pay attention. The serial killer's walking. Stay on high, high alert.